Hi guys, Andy here and welcome back to the Scale Model Shed YouTube channel. And first thing in this video, I'd like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers. The channel has surpassed 50,000 since I did the Centurion, so thank you everyone and I'm hoping soon to be able to bring you more regular videos. And while I'm just showing you some of the kit here, I'll give you a confession that I've never built a model car. However, before owning a hobby shop, I spent many years restoring classic cars. So when this kit was announced, I thought it would be an interesting build for the channel and I ordered one for myself. So I want to build this model as a well used, possibly even unrestored example. So with the nature of this type of model having so many sub assemblies, there is a lot to cover in this video, so I apologise if it seems a little bit quick fire at times. But I wanted to get as much in as I could within a sensible time frame. The detail on this kit is pretty good, and I'm not saying it's the best, but it's more than adequate. So this is how I built this Bugatti Type 35 from Italeri. So starting with the main chassis frame, as usual I recommend using a good pair of sprue cutters. This will make for less clean up and less chance of breaking anything. I predominantly use extra thin cement throughout the build and this can be introduced into a recess before introducing a part or it's best used applying over the join of an already assembled part. Once dry extra thin cement leaves no residue making it an essential part of a clean build. Many of the cylindrical parts of this kit have a step that needs sorting most likely due to the two halves of the mould not quite lining up. One thing I would say about this kit is that the fit is excellent. I had visions of the body shell not lining up but no issues came to light. I usually remove photo etch parts with a hobby knife and clean them up using a knife sharpening tool. This Bugatti engine had hollow tubes running lengthways through the sump. The airflow through these tubes would have helped to cool the engine oil, along with the fins on the bottom of the sump which I melted some dents and scuffs into. The engine was then given a coat of black primer, before being sprayed with AK Extreme Metal white aluminium. As always with these extreme metal paints, make sure you shake the bottle well. The engine block was made of iron and would quickly take on a slightly rusted appearance. Any parts to be left aluminium were masked off and the engine block was then painted in a dark grey. In this instance I used Tamiya German grey. I then used life colour washes to create a rusted effect and these washes look quite vibrant at first but do dry to a really nice tone. The core plugs and any brass nuts on the cylinder head were painted with Mr Metal Colour Brass and this model is going to represent a well used example so any steel nuts are painted with Vallejo Camo Black Brown which is a great dark rust colour.
Hose clips were first shaped around a paintbrush handle before being fixed in place with Flexi CA glue. So I want to make this engine look old but generally well maintained, which they definitely weren't always. For much of the staining of aluminium on this model, I used up Tai Lung's industrial earth. And I apply by thinning it down with up Tai Lung's matte effect thinner. Sepia oil is then applied to create a heavier oil and dirt buildup. And this section is located behind the supercharger and would never easily be cleaned. The drive coupling from the crankshaft to the supercharger is a flexible fabric drive, so I paint it using Tamiya Hull Red. The exhaust manifolds had welded collectors, so a bead of filler was applied around this area. As with the engine block, the exhaust manifolds are first painted in German grey before applying a dark rust colour with a sponge, followed by a white which is used far more sparingly. Life colours eroding dark rust is then speckled over the whole manifold. Once dry the colour was still far too vibrant and wasn't quite where I wanted it to be to match the originals. So I dusted the manifold with a light earth coloured pigment and that did the trick. Now back onto the chassis and the shape of the rear end is set by the fuel tank. So before gluing it's worth taping this firmly into position to avoid any fit issues later. Now the rear of the body can be test fitted. And a good check is to make sure that the hole in the fuel tank lines up perfectly with the hole in the body. The chassis is then primed in black before being painted in grey with a matching FS number to that mentioned in the instructions. Without doubt I find the best way to apply paint chipping is by using a piece of sponge. And it's a good idea to rotate the sponge as you do this to keep the chipping pattern random. You can then take a paintbrush and working between the chips, fill in any areas where the paint has been completely removed. These cars throw oil and muck all over the place and this collects heavily inside the chassis rails. Here I'm using a simple oil wash, but a really good way of adding some texture and some variation of colour into this process is to introduce some pigments.
staining on the fuel tank was achieved by flooding neutral grey with thinners and then leaving it to dry in its natural position. Then slightly more care was taken to create the fuel staining. So now I'm going to move on to the iconically shaped Bugatti radiator. And one thing's for sure is that this radiator should not be chrome. More likely it was going to be nickel plated brass and besides this chrome plastic is pretty nasty. So the first thing I did was take all the shine off to a nice matte finish using a very fine grade abrasive pad. I then masked off the core with masking fluid to avoid any overspray. Before spraying the radiator shell with Mr. Metal Colour Brass. After one very light coat, the brass is then buffed off with a soft cloth. Being careful not to go too far, this gives the impression that the nickel plating has been polished off to reveal the brass underneath. The dashboard has got a one piece engine turned aluminium decal that covers the whole face. I assist the decal's adhesion by applying Mr Mark's setter underneath. I then apply Mr Mark's softer over the top before carefully rolling it down with a cotton bud. I spray polished aluminium over much of the engine turning as over the years much of it would have been polished away. I used Tamiya Hull Red for the Bakelite colour on the Magneto before dry brushing it with silver. My next step is to paint the front axle component and this requires me to make a final decision on the main body colour as all these blue parts and the front of the main chassis rails all need to be painted in the same blue. So I clean out an old paint pot to mix the colour into and I settle on two parts light blue to one part intermediate blue. And this gives me a nice faded Bugatti blue colour. Once the front of the chassis rails are painted, it's worth putting the body under tray on to make sure you have the mask line in the correct position. Many of the front suspension components and brake back plates will be plated underneath the paint. I brush paint Mr Colour Silver to the areas where the paint has flaked away.
The front axle beam, the side steering arm and many other components on the car weren't actually chromed but they were polished steel. Here I painted the steel colour straight over the top of the chrome which gave a really nice finish. If these polished steel components weren't maintained it wouldn't take long for some surface rust to start creeping in. Reference photos show the cars being painted in various different blues over the years. So in a few places I added some intermediate blue paint. Once all the assemblies were painted and weathered, the engine and the bulkhead could be mounted into the chassis. So now moving on to the body shell and the first thing to do is to glue together the underbody panels. And as you can see here the fit is really good. The whole inside of the body is going to be painted in matte aluminium so I first prime it all in black. Whilst cleaning the body with some IPA in preparation for paint, I notice there's a mould line running down the side and this is going to need sorting first. Once the sanding is finished, the area is then buffed with a 4000 buffing pad. This ensures that the area we have been working on has the same glossy appearance as the original plastic. The whole outer body is then primed using a spray can. And then everything's painted in our mixed blue colour. And I chose a light grey primer so as not to change the tone of the blue, as a black primer would probably have toned the blue down too much. Ok weathering starts at the painting stage and I begin by mottling intermediate blue over the top surfaces. I then use the intermediate blue to post shade some areas as well as spraying very lightly over the mottling. This moves the colour of the whole area towards the intermediate blue and tones down the mottling. I then tie the whole thing together by going back over with a very thin down version of the original blue.
To help replicate further paint fading, I mix some sail colour with the blue. This pale colour will also help assist with future weathering stages. And as with the intermediate blue, the effect is adjusted by using the original body colour. I really should have done this before I painted the model, but I then decided to melt a dent into the back of the body. Then I set to painting aluminium onto the body, representing any flaked away paint or chips. This sponge had some of the brown acrylic paint from the chassis and the Mr. Colour Silver on it. It was a happy accident. The two colours together created a really nice effect. The cowling was attached to the body using VMS's Flexi CA glue. The whole thing was then sealed with a coat of matte varnish. The intermediate blue wasn't used at all on the driver's cowling and you can see here how it really benefits from that contrast. Before I fit the body under pan, I make it nice and oily. And again, the key here is to flood the oil with thinners and allow it to flow naturally. After starting some weathering on the front valance, I decided it needed a hand painted number plate.
The rear end of the car in my reference photos has got some quite heavy paint bleaching. And for this I used MIG Ammo's Rainmark effects. Because enamels are essentially oils, once they're dry you can still blend them and for this I just use my thumb. Fine streak lines are created using an AK weathering pencil. And then once finished their effect is blended in with a heavy brush. The large flat shader brush can also be used to blend the rain mark effects. And here you can see enamels being used to complement the pale colour I airbrushed on earlier. So now I'm going to start making this car look a bit grimy and I start with raw umber which gives you a good pale oily colour. I first apply the oil straight out of the tube and then after removing the majority of it with a cotton bud blend it with a soft brush. This brush is kept as dry and as clean as possible and don't get it near any thinners otherwise this feathering of the oil will not work. This raw umber blend forms the initial step to weathering the grime on the lower part of the body. Thinners is used with the raw umber to create a much different effect below the steering box as this is an area that will have actively leaking grease and oil. The next step is to use a much darker oil such as a sepia, both neat and thinned down as a pin wash. I use the dry brush I've been blending with to create a stain behind where the handbrake will sit. The next step is to try and make these plain seats look in keeping with the rest of the car. After painting in rubber black I then once again take Mr Colour Sail Colour. And then with a sponge apply some worn out areas to the leather. I enjoy using lacquer or solvent based paints for this kind of effect because as they dry they go tacky and they last much longer on the sponge. I figured this is a pretty good colour for any area that's been worn right down to leather. And this is an important part, although it's quite difficult to see, I'm going back over areas in rubber black. And this just breaks up any areas that may look too uniform. And another important part is to get a wear line down either side of the pleats. 
and this can be done by getting the sponge in just the right position and working it up and down the line but not pushing it right into the crease. And finally I apply some dark earth pigment over the top of some pigment fixer and work it down into the gap in the back of the seat. After the aero screen was masked, it was primed in black and then painted blue, before being chipped using Mr. Metal Colour Brass. The Aeroscreen's photo etch and brackets were bent to the correct contour of the body. And then the Aeroscreen was glued onto the cowl, which was really not that fun. As with the gear lever slot, the canvas shield here was stained with a sepia oil wash. The end of the exhaust pipes supplied with the kit are pretty horrendous. So I made some new ones out of some Albion Alloys brass tube. Much like many of these cars, I'm also going to finish my exhaust pipes just rearward of the back axle. I cut the plastic using the same pipe cutting tool that I used to cut the brass. After chamfering the end of the pipes, the brass tube was glued on with superglue. The exhaust pipes then go through the same process as the exhaust manifolds. Except for the fact that the brown and the white are faded out until they're no longer present from about halfway down the pipe. The main difference is that on the exhaust pipes I used a black pigment rather than the earth tone that I used on the manifolds. The black pigment was applied directly over wet pigment fixer to create a textured matte black exhaust pipe. The underside of the body was finished by first sponging silver and then applying a dark brown enamel panel line wash. This was then dried with a hairdryer in the direction of the airflow before oil staining was applied around the back end of the sump. I applied some dark earth pigment underneath where the exhaust pipe is fitted. Control cables are fitted using the wire supplied with the kit and secured using CA glue.
In order to get the front wheels tracking in a straight line, a straight edge was taken from back to front, then the steering drop arm was glued in position. I first painted the steering wheel with extreme metal steel, then painted the rim with Tamiya XF64 red brown. I then took three different shades of brown and sponged them onto the rim randomly. After the stone guard mesh is weaved onto the frame, I paint it with extreme metal steel before adding some corrosion. The kit supplies a decal for the knurling around the radiator cap. But I choose to add this knurling using a rosy riveter. The underside of the bonnets are weathered using an industrial earth oil wash and black pigments. And once the bonnets are fitted, that sees the body nearly completed. The last step is to apply some exhaust staining around the back end. After an area had been airbrushed in black, thinned down sepia oil was applied. This was used as a pigment fixer and pigments were applied directly over the top. Once the pigment fixer is nearly dry, a wipe over with a stiff brush creates the desired effect. The colour of the wheels straight out of the kit is actually pretty good. But I'm going for a slightly oxidised aluminium look. So I start off by mottling some dark aluminium over the top. I then use a pale grey panel line wash to get the oxidised effect. And finally I speckle some dark brown enamel wash. The tyres have a central moulding line which needs to be sorted out with a sanding pad.
and once done any dust is blown out of the tread with an airbrush. The tyres are then weathered using dry step splashes from MIG. This is applied and then heavily thinned down to a wash with odourless enamel thinners. Which is then wiped off while still leaving some build up in the treads. The bonnet straps were cut from the same fabric that are used for the windshield and the gear lever gaiter. This fabric is supplied with the kit and was stained to colour using MIG Ammo's brown wash for German dark yellow. So finally, to make the model look like the vehicle's just been driven, I position some leaves as if it's driven through a line of trees in autumn. So that's it for this one guys, if you enjoyed the video give it a like and if you haven't already it would be great if you subscribe to the channel. And remember if you're in the UK you can shop with me online at scalemodelshed.co.uk or you can come and visit me at the shop in Somerset. So thank you so much for watching, happy modelling everyone and see you next time.